But then we go back 15 years. Now the territory system is in full swing. And everybody, for the most part, is doing well. And this is a breakdown of a Houston show from June 22nd, 1980. And the reason why I got a tickle of it when I, when I looked at it is because I had 17 talents on my card, including two referees, and he's got 16 on his card, including two referees. And I would assume that the rent was probably it back there 15 years earlier in Houston, because those were the days where Paul Bosch was running the Sam Houston Coliseum every Friday night. So I would imagine he had a really sweet rent deal and it probably wouldn't have been much more. But in this case, the main event was Harley race versus Mil Moscaris for the NWA title with a co uh, semifinal match of Gino Hernandez against Bruiser Brody. And then the rest of the card is its matches with, you know, wrestlers, the local people know, but ain't nothing to write home about. So let me go through the payoffs first. The, well, I'll give you the gross gate. The gross was $34,160, but because they only had 3% state tax back then, the tax was $1,024.80. So the bastards, I got zapped for more tax than he did on the house at twice as much. And the net was $33,135. That was for a, an NWA world title match on top, but this was not by far the biggest card in the history of Houston. And that money in today's money, the the gross or the net gate would have been $112,112. $112. And this is something that he did every Friday night. Not this big, but a show they ran every Friday night. So imagine you ran Friday before, the next Friday you come in, world title match to 112 grand. And in, uh, hold on here a second, I lost my figures. Okay. So Harley Race and Mil Moscaris for a payoff for the main event on a $34,000 gross house got $2,385 a piece. Remember when the Midnight Express and Watts and Dog drew hundred grand at the Sam Houston Coliseum? We got $1,500 a piece. Even splitting it five ways because it was a tag team and a manager. 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. Paul Bosch doing the payoffs paid Harley and Moscaris collectively almost as much money as that match got under Watts uh, four years later. Really says something, too, considering this is right, I mean, right before, I would think, 1980, right before the Harley Race NWA relationship with Bosch completely fell out because he thought Harley was purposely screwing with him. And look at the payoff he gave him here. I mean, that yeah. was, what would it be? It would be St. Louis and Houston when it came to the best payoffs for him, probably. Well, in that $2,385 in today's money translates to $8,069. So that's an $8,000 payoff for a house show for both guys. No wonder Mascaris was so stuck up. And Gino and Brody got getting the grand underneath. Well, a dollar then is three thirty eight dollars today. So they basically got $3,300 for being the semifinal match. And then let me give you the rest of the names. Tiny Tom and Little Lone Eagle. He gave the midgets $500 a piece. El Rivalde, which is one of the Hispanic wrestlers, I have no idea. Jose Lothario, Hans Schroeder, El Gran Marcus, all got $300 each. Probably a tag team match. El Cicadelico got $250, but $200 trans. And that's Moscow's well, brother. Moscaris' brother, he had to come along. Bull Ramos, 250. Leo Seitz, 250. Tiger Conway Jr., 250. Bronco Lubich was one of the referees. He got 275. He was bonus $25. He might have torn his shirt. Danny McShane, referee, got 250. Nick Kozak, the ring crew, he got 250. I paid my ring crew $75 less than Bosch did 15 years later. He sent. $116 to the Dallas office 
for booking Harley Race and the Midgets for him and sent $325 to the NWA in St. Louis because that was the percentage for uh, uh, booking the champion. What about Gary Hart? Because Gary Hart, was he the booker for the Dallas office at that time? Well, he was not, he's not on this sheet even for a payoff. So he didn't come down. He was on the outs. Who knows? Something happened. Because sometimes the Dallas booker would be uh, uh, down on these sheets for a payoff, as we've seen from some of the other sheets. But anyway, so all that boiled down to that his cash talent payroll was $11,155 which was much more than my four grand, but it worked out to 33% of his net gross. So that was the way guy, he took 33% of the gross. He paid the main event, the majority of the money because they drew it. The semifinal got most of the rest. And then because there was only another 12 wrestlers on the card, they, each divided between $250 and $500. Another problem with Watts's cards was he was grossing a lot more money, but he not only had more guys on the card, he had more top guys on the card. I mean, he went deep with Midnight Express, Rock and Roll Express, Terry Taylor, Magnum TA, Mr. Wrestling 2, Junkyard Dog, uh, Hacksaw Duggan, Star, Star, Star. So it's a it's kind of a devil's bargain to get those big grosses. You got to put the star-studded cards out. The star-studded cards need big grosses because those stars ain't going to stay if you're dividing one piece of pie eight ways. You need the whole fucking pie. But that's the way, but again, that's the way that the territory business used to work. And again, Houston was a standalone town, but imagine the guys with the territories like Crockett and the Carolinas and especially Vince senior in the Northeast and Vern Gagne with the AWA. When he had those major media markets in the Midwest, you could do Chicago's and Denver's and Minneapolis's like that. And the office would end up with, a significant amount of money because of the constant repetition of these thousands of tickets being sold over and over and over again. And back there, 34 grand as a gross in Houston at those ticket prices back then probably means they did somewhere around six to 7,000 people. And that's for a weekly event. And that was toward the end of the month. So there you go. Any questions, uh, Grasshopper? No, I think you've answered most of my questions in talking about everything. And I, I always enjoy when we do the Houston payoff sheets because it always unleashes this history out of you. <laughs> <laughs> we always get a good segment out of it. But no, great stuff there.